What's up everybody? Welcome back to Diesel Creek. If this is your first time joining us, my name's Matt. Now you've already clicked on the video, so you kind of know what's going on here. We're building the big leaf blower. Why do we need a giant leaf blower, Matt? Why do we need a giant diesel powered leaf blower? Well, this is a poor illustration because yesterday I put some fresh rock on the driveway and filled in some uh, little low spots and sinkholes on the driveway. But before I put the fresh rock on it, you couldn't see my driveway, okay? It looked like that side of the road or this side of the road. It just blended right in because all the leaves from all these trees, of course, fell right down on the driveway and just cover it right up. Now, that A, makes it hard to stay on the driveway if you're not familiar with it. B, that ends up turning into dirt. All those leaves break down over time and just get ground down into the rock and end up filling up your rock with dirt. So. What I want to do is build a giant leaf blower to clean off the driveway in one swoop. Now, you might just say, Matt, just buy a stupid $200 leaf blower and just, you know, like a normal guy. Well, see, I tried that. And just to do this section that you can see here, it took me like 40 minutes. I'm not about that life. I don't have that kind of spare time floating around. And a lot of you know, this is a very, very small segment of my driveway. My driveway from the road to the shipping container shop is over 1,800 feet long. That'd be a lot of leaf blowing with a little hand blower or even a backpack. So this is a gale or gel or I don't know how you actually say that name. That makes skid loaders too and I'm never sure on how to say the name. But what this is, is a silage blower. So this hooks up to the PTO on your tractor via that shaft right there and it spins so you dump grain into this hopper and that auger shoves it over into that big impeller in there which is spinning at 540 ripums and what does that do well it creates a whole bunch of wind and lift and integrates the grain into it and shoves it up that tube which is usually connected to a pipe on the side of a silo and fills it up 40 50 60 feet and fills the silo up so needless to say in order to throw grain 60 feet straight up in the air this thing puts out one heck of a lot of air. So I started digging around online and I didn't look super hard, so don't start throwing articles and videos in my face here, but I did do a quick search and I couldn't find anybody on YouTube that's done this. I found one article that was a write-up in some farming magazine or something, and it was a guy that made one of these similar to what I'm gonna do. So I figured you guys would probably like this and wanna follow along. My goal with this thing is to be able to clean my driveway off 90% in one pass. So I'll drive from here all the way out to the road and it'll be pretty much be cleared off. And then on the way back down through, I'll just hit it again because I have to come through anyways. And that'll take off the last little tidbit and the driveway should be spotless. I'm actually concerned that this thing is gonna blow so hard that it's gonna blow my rock around. I don't wanna be blowing all my rock off the driveway. <laughs> so where do we start? What do we need to do to get this thing hooked up to the tractor? Well. This whole big auger bin back here that shoves the grain off into the impeller, we don't need that thing anymore. So I guess we can start there. We're gonna have to unbolt all this crap and hope it comes off of there. And if not, we'll have to get out the, uh, the torch. And there is a shaft, the main drive shaft that spins the impeller runs right through here and comes out the backside and then comes down and runs this auger. And I don't want to be towing this thing anymore. So we're going to cut off all that crap down there with the wheels and the trailer hitch and all that. And I want to rig this thing up so that it connects right to the three point on the tractor and I can lift it up and down. And maybe if this thing works really good, I thought about getting fancy and building a more pointed chute here or maybe a fan type chute, which is more of a rectangle shape. And then I thought about putting a little hydraulic cylinder on here and make it so you can angle the fan up and down. That's getting pretty fancy, but I think it's within the realm of possibilities here. First thing that's gonna go here, we're gonna rip off this hitch, that turnbuckle thingy deal, and every single nut and bolt on this thing looks like it is just completely rusted over. So I actually already soaked all the bolts down when I got this thing, and we're gonna go ahead and bust the croil out and soak them all again so that we have half a chance of getting these things off of here. Alright, well 
I've never actually heard this thing run. The people I brought it from were very nice, but they said that it had been sitting in their shed for many years and they hadn't used it in a long time. So I got the tractor out here. I guess we should go ahead and connect that PTO shaft and make sure this thing spins over. All right, well, we got the uh, the old PTO connected there. I guess we'll I guess we'll just stand back and let her eat. absolutely everywhere and I'm sure you guys could hear that thing going ting 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 so what that is is the housing here this blower housing actually has a dent down here it seems Ugh, yeah and that propeller impeller whatever you call this thing this wing man it actually hits pretty hard so look at that not to fear though that's a pretty easy fix all we gotta do is whack that spot down right there with a hammer a little bit we'll clearance that right up yeah that, that hits pretty hard all right so i was actually wrong after a little bit better inspection i found that right there on the left hand side is where the impeller is hitting at actually i think it's hitting in multiple places still not that big a deal. So I've confirmed it's hitting in multiple places actually. A little bit more work than I was hoping for, but still shouldn't be too bad. Well, I hope those two bolts were an indication for the rest of the bolts on this unit, but I have my doubts they were the two best looking ones. Interesting. Well, to be quite honest, the thing is not built the way I realized it was. Now, I have never messed with one of these silage blowers before. I thought the chute was just going to come off of there, and I thought that this outer skin here that went the rest of the way around the impeller you know this piece here as you can see it's not welded up there at all I thought that thing was welded solid up there that actually oh that's awesome wow this project just got so much easier <laughs> all right so this is really exciting I thought this was gonna be a lot more of a project than it's gonna end up being here I thought that this piece here was completely welded all the way around and it was just this little piece of chute here that would unbolt off of here for access into the impellers. Turns out, as you can see, nothing's welded. What that means is that this whole band, this outer band with the chute attached, could slide to any position, which is exactly what we need. I was going to turn the whole unit 90 degrees, that way we could have the spout on the bottom and blow the leaves. but. Better yet, I can just leave everything just how it is and I can slide the band down to be 90 degrees. Unbelievable, look how easy this thing spins. Look how easy this thing spins. I haven't even lubed it up or anything and it's all rusted. I figured this thing would be still tough to slide. The only thing currently stopping us from sliding the band and making it 90 degrees right now is this brace down here. So we gotta cut that piece of plate out of there, get rid of this axle, because we still don't need any of that crap. And then we'll be able to set this thing to 90 degrees. And so that's good news. Let's go ahead and start unbolting all this garbage back here, because we still don't need that. And we'll still gotta get rid of the tongue, and then we're gonna have to figure out the PTO there. We can, we gotta shorten that shaft up quite a bit.
All right. Well, we finally got that thing off of there. That was turned into a struggle. I couldn't get to those bolts. I could get to these ones, but I couldn't get to the backside to really hold them. So uh, it was pretty easy to just run right down there with a cutoff wheel, slice that off there, and uh, away she goes. Now, obviously, this is like the arm remover 5000 here. You, you certainly wanna, wouldn't want to stick your hand anywhere near this thing when it's running. Um, so what we're going to do is cut a nice piece of expanded metal to go over that so that will keep any large debris or limbs from entering. able to get the uh, the PTO off here and what we're gonna end up having to do because we're gonna mount this thing on the three-point hitch of the tractor we don't need such a long PTO shaft so we'll have to cut this down we're gonna do that later next thing I'm gonna do is roll this thing up and over and we're gonna figure out how we're gonna mount our three-point hitch brackets So we cut this metal here for our mounting bracket. We'll weld one guy right there. Then we will weld this guy right like so. And then right here we'll drill a hole and have our three point uh, pins sticking out here so we'll be able to hitch up to this thing. Brand new box of 6011 here. Let's go ahead and buzz these brackets on.
Yeah, baby. Starting to look like something now. Too bad. As you saw, I cut up the uh, the original hitch off of this unit and welded it on here for my A-frame for the three-point. Uh, and then, amazingly enough, these other two pieces that I cut off that were the rest of the hitch, they work out perfectly to be our uh, bracing here. So, hard to ask for much better than that. These should be the last things we have to weld on here. This is the top link for our three-point mount. And the last thing we'll have to do after we get these mounted is uh, fit. We'll put this thing on the tractor and then measure for our PTO shaft.
Okay, so we finally got this thing mounted up like it needs to be, and what we need to do now is figure for our PTO shaft. The one that came on it is going to be way too long at this point, so we'll have to figure out just how far we can cut that thing down to make it fit in here. So let's bust out the measuring tape and do some figuring here. I got the drive line pretty much level with each other. It looks like I could bring the blower down just a hair still. And when they're level, that should be the shortest distance that that should ever have to be. So we just gotta make sure that we give it a few inches of play so that it doesn't bind up on itself. Well, we're really in a time crunch here because it's getting dark and I'd like to show this thing to you tonight So I can get the video up to you tomorrow So I stole the drive line off of my mower and we will have to deal with That in the future But this should work for now This will get us going That's a big bummer. That shaft is too long after all. I really thought that that was going to be short enough to get us going here. All right, I've, I've played around with this PTO shaft a bit, and I think the plastic guard on it was actually all bound up on itself. Wouldn't let it collapse all the way, so we'll go ahead and try to install it now. I think it's going to work. this thing it's made in voyage and that's rotate the chute here right now we're in silage blowing mode but remember we just got to loosen these bolts and we can spin that baby down into leaf blowing mode and then I'm excited Violations. Thank <laughs> you. 
got this thing to where it spins all the way through here and doesn't lock up hard. So it is just touching it in a couple little stupid spots. And, you know, I check every one of them and they're all in different spots. So, like each blade hits in a different spot, the ones that hit. There's only like two or three of them that hit. But the main places that we're rubbing before are not rubbing now, so I think we're gonna go ahead and try this thing. You'll remember originally the spout was up here, so the way this blower worked, it would draw air right here, and then it would carry it all the way around and then push it out right here to get some pressure. So now that we're only drawing air right here and then shoving it out there, I don't think we're gonna have nearly the push that we will after we do some more work to this thing. So because I put pictures of this thing on Instagram, and asked what you guys thought I was gonna do with it. A couple people suggested a straw blower, and that's one of the things I wouldn't mind having, but they're always too expensive. And I believe this unit with some modification will be able to do it. So what we would have to do for a straw blower is turn this thing back past where it was and have the chute facing out over here on a slight angle upward. And we would have to leave this open so we could feed pieces of straw bill into there. And I think that'll work as a straw blower. So originally I was just gonna put a piece of expanded metal over this thing so nobody gets their arm removed with it and you know, use it as a leaf blower and then straw blow. Uh, you just open that cover up and throw the straw in. But uh, actually, now that we're able to rotate the outer housing to where we need, I think I'm gonna make a block off plate for this thing and that'll seal the air off right here and then I'm gonna cut some like eight inch holes right here. And that'll allow us to draw some air over here for when we're leaf blowing, which will be 90% of the use that this thing sees. And then if we need to blow some straw with it, we can just unbolt the plate real quick and easy, flip the chute up and around and off to the races. All right, I'm gonna fire this thing back up again and hopefully it doesn't sound like a death machine this time. tell I got her angled pretty hard right now I was actually able to just turn the adjustment on the three-point hitch that knob right up here crank that all the way and that twists this thing so we get a nice downward angle for the leaves and also my fears have been realized with that hole being where it is there's nowhere near as much pressure coming out of there now as there was when we first tried this thing at the beginning of the video but nonetheless I'm ready to try and blow some leaves with it and, and then we can see what kind of revisions we need to make. See, this is exactly why somebody like me needs to live way back here in the sticks with no neighbors. I don't think you'd be too happy with your neighbor if uh, he fired up his tractor late at night like this and just decided to try out his new diesel powered leaf blower. <laughs> Anyways, as I hope you guys can see, I'm standing here in the middle of the woods. There is leaves abound. We're gonna try and blow these things and see how that thing does. I'm thinking it's gonna work, but not fantastic. We're gonna need to do some revision.
Well, this has been a long day. I wish it was a long rewarding day, but it was slightly disappointing here with this build. Um, I'm not disappointed with the build. I know the potential is there, but as I predicted, having our intake hole in the location it is, is robbing us of, I'd say probably 80 to 90% of the power from this blower. One of my favorite things about making videos and putting them on YouTube like this is I get so many great ideas from all of you guys, all of your comments, suggestions, uh, critiques. Those all, I, I read all the comments, or I try to at least, and I do learn a lot and take a lot of notes from you guys. So I really appreciate that. If you guys got any thoughts on this build, drop them down below. Um, as I said, we have to relocate that air intake. I know that that's a problem. But if you guys know of anything else that's probably robbing power or could be improved, go ahead and let me know down below. So one thing I did learn from running it just for those few minutes there is that it's really easy to drag the chute. So uh, I think we're going to rig up some sort of a bogey wheel on this side too. Of course, the axle stub is still there from the original wheel. I never did take that one off yet. I might end up leaving it because it's not in the way. But... I can't just put this wheel back on over here, obviously, because it, it cleared the chute now. So maybe we could just cut that off and relocate it a little further back and just set it so that it's just a hair lower than that chute is so that it can't drag the ground. Other than that, the whole three-point hitch that I built there seems to be working pretty good. That was really amazing to me how well it all worked out to just be able to scavenge the hitch and repurpose it build it into the new hitch so that that was nice that we didn't have to uh, get into too much new metal so i am really excited about this project i'm gonna need this project for something else i'm gonna have coming up here very shortly and i'm sure you guys will really like that whenever we get to it i had mentioned that i posted this thing on instagram and you guys had given me some great ideas on other uses for this thing so this thing is going to be a multi-purpose unit once i get the kinks worked out of it we're going to have leaf blower we're going to have straw blower we're gonna have snow blower and one other use that i'm sure a lot of you can guess but that's what we're gonna have coming up shortly to use this thing for anyways guys that's gonna wrap this one up for me it's been a late night this is actually friday evening and i hope you're watching this saturday morning so i gotta go home and slap this thing into the computer and hopefully get it to you guys i really enjoy making these videos but they do take a lot of time and a lot of effort so if you guys like the video do me a big favor hit that thumbs up button it really helps the channel out and doesn't cost you guys a thing and of course if this is your first time joining us and you're not already subscribed to the diesel creek channel make sure you go ahead and click that subscribe button so i can see you on the next episode thanks for watching later